Hello, my fellow gamers. Welcome, welcome back to the game here. Welcome back to Deadly Prediction 2. Last time, the giant lady's finger. Yeah, I don't have a good name, I'll be honest with you. Today, you see those shadows just moving weirdly? I got a bad feeling about this. We go to this restricted area. There can't be anything bad here, right? Patty, the truth is, when I first saw Okra Boy, I remembered something horrific. What? The most evil monster I've ever seen, in fact. What? A monster? Oh, yes. A demon incarnate who plunged New York City into mortal fear. The Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man. Bruh. Marshmallow? Ghostbusters, 1984, directed by Ivan Reitman. Now that's a film that was filled to the brim with bona fide horror. I don't think he's seen Ghostbusters. A true masterpiece that boasted an honest depiction of just how frightening a real ghost would be. I don't think he's seen Ghostbusters. Even if you watched it now, I'm sure it would still chill you to the bone. Yeah, he hasn't watched Ghostbusters. First night I watched it, I was too afraid to go to the bathroom alone. So I made Zack come with me. Huh? huh? The door. Head to the control cabin, but it's right there? No, you're not doing that to me, game. Always to Patty. Welcome to the. Did uh, you notice anything strange before your daddy? All right, so this is interesting. We're going to. Screw off! Screw off! Screw off! Screw off! So, I what get... other movies have you seen on that sci-fi movie channel? What? That... I may actually... A good feeling about this like I am getting wrecked freak I didn't realize we had Lockman over there Oh my god, I can't aim. Yeah, I think I'm gonna need that. Oh. Oh. Ah, curse you. Did she cheat? I think she cheated. It didn't heal, heal me nearly enough as I expected it to. I called the plate. And this is why I just want another gun in general. Than Mr. Alligator. I don't like this. You're still alive? 
die. Holy cow. That thing's still uh, okay. There she did. She went down. Okay, seriously, Orc? Okay, screw you. Freak. Patty just scared the crap out of me. But that's weird that the it just, that section just ended like that. Patty, what's that? You know what? If I don't have to fight him, I'm not going to. It's good logic in life. A meth lab. No wait. Actually. Zack, I think we found a laboratory. I think I said that first, York. Oh wait, I kind of want one of those, and I kind of want two of those. And we will use one of these, and we will drink one of these. Okay, I have way too much health, I think. Oh, great. We get to inspect stuff. It's like a stomach, a brain, and a... I can't tell what the third thing is. A research log. No, it looks more like a journal. Look, Zach. This belonged to Lena Doman. Now the research journey, but the one that carried my plan. Hmm. A professor to the very end. This book is filled with all sorts of detailed notes. I wonder what that is. Hmm. She studied abroad during school, most likely in order to get as far away from her father's prejudice as possible. Abroad, she studied chemistry and fire dynamics, then cultivated the groundwork for Saint Rouge. Huh. If what's written in this journal is to be believed, Saint Rouge is a naturally derived substance. That must mean it's something akin to ayahuasca, the hallucinogen found in the Amazon region. Wait, what? But Saint Rouge wasn't actually produced here. It appears that a special environment is necessary to summon the Red Demon. That's weird. Zach, look at this. Okay. I can't look at it with it. It says that when Lena was still known as Lenny, she once fell in love with a woman. She fell in love with her older sister. That matches up with what PJ mentioned just before he died. And apparently, they had a daughter. Wait. The Clarkson's family tree is far more complicated than I could have imagined. You can say that again. And here it says that the Clarkson's older daughter later fell in love with someone in town and got married. Then she must still be somewhere in this town. Hey, Patty. Did you know about all this? Uh, I don't know. I said something like an episode or two ago that was completely wrong. And I said it as a, like, I said it completely wrong and I realized it was how I said it. Okay, so let's go over one big fact that PJ pointed out. It something about Patricia Clarkson. There is one Patricia in the game. Patty here. And PJ asked about her mama, who's Candy. 
which I'm starting to assume is his daughter. Fell in love with some guy, which would be... I forgot his name already. Freak. The Sheriff. So, is the big woman actually Candy, which I randomly said wrong, but ended up being right about, and the guy that was actually taking care of her in the boat was... Why can I not remember his name? Oh my god. It's bothering me hard now. Right this there. entry is from right after she became Lena. Zach, what could this mean? A salesman passing through town gave me an epiphany that changed my what? life. What? She didn't create San Rouge until after she met this person. And from that point onward, she started fanatically worshipping someone. She also ceases to mention anything more about her older sister. And the word goddess of fertility starts appearing everywhere. No. No, no, no. That's Casey. This is the only other character I've seen in this game that has any resemblance to the first game. I don't like that. Walkie talkie. final entry, written just before she headed to the Clarkson's house. No one can stop my plan. Not even me. My only worry now is P. I only pray the fool king can stop him. Zack, it looks like we've uncovered yet another new character. Who's the fool king? This is starting to read like a badly written tragedy. Just like all your games. P. It appears that Lena's worried about whether or not the Fool King will be able to stop our investigation and successfully murder this P character. P. Philip? Or Professor? Someone's behind. No. It can't be. Oh. Whew. I'm starting to think I'm spot on and I don't like it. Oh, I'm really not liking the fact that maybe you're right. The P is Patty. <laughs> Hoonigan? Or Hoonigan? <sighs> Hi there, Hoondan. Long time no see. Pineapple? Hmm. This is definitely your simplest oracle by far. <laughs> Go back to the hotel. <sighs> Patty. Now it all makes sense. Zack, we need to hurry back to the hotel and put all this in order. Okay, so... The fact that I was accidentally right to a degree... ...scares the crap out of me. And seeing Casey again, really, I don't appreciate. So... Now it's... Why is it... Why is it all sunshine and rainbows now? What? <sighs> well, that was a weird animation. Okay, so they're trying to kill Patty. Who may be the last Clarkson alive. But. 
I'm gonna have to be cheap here. Or quick. To sacrifice her to the fertility goddess. Which we're really still not sure at this point who that is. Random sex phone guy. I'm baffled, but that's what it's starting to look like. Also, sorry for that of a premonition one spoiler. We found many new truths hidden in Lena Doman's journal. Yes, we did. Some of them went far beyond our wildest dreams. First, we should clear up who PJ's first Melvin. daughter is. She was a complete mystery until now. But after reading Lena's journal, I became convinced of something. She still lives somewhere in this town. Lena's journal stated that this woman married someone from the same town. Did you figure it out yet, Zach? Yep. Who is PJ Clarkson's first daughter? Candy. Yes. Melvin's beloved wife and the most beautiful woman in town, Candy. She's PJ Clarkson's first daughter, which means that just like Galena, Candy also carries his blood. Now we know why Melvin said that Galena was a beauty who could attract a lot of attention. Candy had no interest in the inheritance and was also sexually liberated. What does that even... I don't... I don't like that statement because it doesn't quite make sense to me. That must be why PJ ended up coddling Lena so much. Candy is supposedly sick, but she's now become a key person in our case. She must be why Melvin's gone missing. Melvin's beloved wife, Candy, committed a transgression in her past. Zach, what was it? It was that. That's right. Candy had intercourse with Lena. Then she gave birth to a child, a child that we know very well. We never heard any mention of her biological father anywhere in town, despite how much these country folk love to spread rumors. I knew there had to be some secret connected to her birth, but I never thought it'd be something like this. For real, though. It's beyond anything I ever could have imagined, Zack. Next up is the Fool King, Zack. All you need to do is pick out the person who acted most like a fool when we encountered them. Honestly, the answer is clear. And it's a painful one to accept. Melvin. Isn't it, Zack? Melvin. He's got to be the Fool King. The way he's acted from the moment he located Lisa's body up to now. The way Galena was murdered, silenced, without any resistance. His discord with the Clarksons. The words PJ left behind. And the engineer boot prints we saw at the discovery site. It feels like the missing puzzle pieces are all falling into place now. But why did he decide to take part in Lena's plan? According to Patricia, he seemed to be avoiding Lena. There's no way he actually could have believed that the goddess of fertility would come and save the town. Oh. So that's it, Melvin. As you nursed Candy, you too became corrupted by San Rouge. Drugs rob people of their judgment. They slowly but surely eat away at their users. Yeah. That's most likely the reason it took Lena so long to enact her plan. I don't know what to say, Zack. This is absolutely unbearable. Lena fell in love with her older sister, Candy, and the two of them had intercourse. But afterwards, Lena realized that there was a disparity between her body and her mind and descended into suffering. Finally, Lena left home and decided to live on as Professor R. Meanwhile, Candy fell in love with Melvin, which led to her leaving home as well. I could only guess that Lena and Candy's relationship continued after they left home. Then, their strange love transformed into something else that bound them together in a powerful new way. Lena must have periodically delivered San Rouge to Candy as offerings to the goddess of fertility. Wait. 
You're telling me Candy's the goddess it's of fertility? It's hard to keep going with this, Zack. You know where it's all leading, don't you? If Lena's plan was to kill off every last Clarkson aside from her goddess, then her next target is PJ's last living descendant. She's in danger. We need to hurry. I mean, that one was an obvious one. I mean, pick one. The last one always is pick three. Okay, so... Zack, the climax is upon us. Whoever hit me in that control room sure wasn't holding back. The blow was so devastating that I passed out instantly. There aren't many people who could do that. Hmm. Oh, they hit me right in my head, so my memories are fuzzy. Not my finest hour, to say the least. Now, what should we do next? First, we're going to need to refresh ourselves a little. Sunbathing, Zack. Let's go bask in some liquid sunshine that's just as hot as the sun out there. Oh, I'll take a shit. Um. The only thing I could think of. Would be. Go back to um, the owl's nest, but even that seems far fetched. Um, what you need a ride next time on Deadly Premonition 2? Okay, why we'll figure this out. I'll see you then.